we're going to begin our conversation on the Anglo-Saxon and medieval periods, um, which was from 449 to 1485, um, dealing with this first um, period of time, uh, recorded time in, in British history. Um, we're going to start by talking about some vocabulary that's going to be really critical to our unit. Um, I just want to go through um, the different vocabulary words and just explain them um, a little bit better uh, for your understanding. So the first uh, vocabulary, the first couple are types of uh, literature that we're going to read um, during this unit. Uh, and then I'll talk about some literary devices. And then I'll talk a little bit about historical terms before we launch into our discussion on um on the Anglo-Saxon and medieval period. So an elegy is a poem mourning the loss of someone or something. It would have been kind of like um, an obituary notice in, in terms where you would praise a, um, a person for their life uh, after they passed. Um, epic poetry is long narrative poems. They're written in heightened language or an elevated style. Um, that celebrates the deeds of a legendary hero or god. And we'll talk about um, that in history, you know, a lot of um, the original literature was about heroes and gods and from Greek and from um, this time period as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But we do, do understand that an epic poem is a long narrative poem that's written in heightened, in heightened language that celebrates the deeds of a hero or a god. The third vocabulary word is medieval romance. And we'll actually look at two of those in this time period. Um, it is a dramatic verse or prose narrative that usually involves adventurous heroes, idolized love, exotic places, and supernatural events. Some of the literary devices that are going to be frequent uh, during this time period and in the literature from this time period are alliteration. It's the repetition of consonant sounds and words that are close together. Um, this example is from Beowulf, child, strong, son. You're the repetition of that S sound. Sestura is a Latin word. It means cutting off. And that's going to be a pause within a poetic line that breaks up the metrical pattern. Um, sometimes that's indicated by space, like uh, spaces or ellipses, which is the dot, 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 uh, or commas. A kenning is a two-word metaphorical name for an object, um, and these were kind of like a, a game to um, the Anglo-Saxon people. Um, they would have been um, metaphorical names for objects, and they would they were almost kind of like riddles, and then people would try to figure out what they were. Some of them are more obscure than others. Um, for example, well road uh, is not... Is, is liter taken literally the road where the whales pass is also is a metaphor for the sea. So, several of the historical terms are going to be very important in terms of context for this unit. Uh, the first one is commentatus, and that was that was the Germanic code of loyalty. So you have these warriors; they swore fealty and loyalty to their king, um, and then they would fight and protect him lay down their lives if it was necessary and in return the king was expected to be generous with gifts of treasure and land um, and taking care of the family if something happened to um, the warrior. A shope is an Anglo-Saxon composer and storyteller who travels from court to court to entertain. Um, shopes were widely popular during the time period um, obviously during that time of no electricity and, and entertainment uh, like we know it today it was very different these people would travel from court to court to tell stories and sing songs and this is actually how um, a lot of history was spread in the very beginning back before there was written language were the storytellers who would travel uh, and spread these stories from place to place. A Virgild is a man payment. That's what it literally stands for. Um, that's when you paid a slain man family. Uh, so say like I um, I was a, a warrior and I killed another man, I would pay that man's family his Virgild or his man payment to atone for the killing and to prevent them from taking revenge. So at first it was kind of an informal thing, kind of like a just agreed upon thing, but then it was later regulated by law. And so their Virgild 
their worth was determined by their social status. So, for example, a lord's fur deal would be much more than a common man's. Um, these uh, vocabulary words will come up multiple times throughout um, the period of this unit, so hopefully you can commit those to memory um, and complete your terminology chart, which is located on page six of your textbook, or your, I'm sorry, your, your um, workbook that you receive. So that's the unit vocabulary.